Welcome to this video. It's a free lesson from our advanced videography course where we do a deep dive into my lighting setup for my YouTube slash online course videos. I'm going to show you how you can go from a naturally lit setup like this to what you're seeing right here by adding key lights, a back rim light, a back ambient light, and then adding a little bit of a fill light or fill filter to light me, Phil Evaner. All right, let's dive in and I hope you enjoy. Now, right now, the lighting that I'm using is just a bunch of light coming from behind the camera, which is my garage door opened. So what you can see is just a lot of ambient light. It's not direct sunlight, but that's typically better. And this would be the same idea of having a big window and sitting in front of it or to the side of it with that light coming in from that window. It's a nice setup. I'm looking at my monitor right here and I can see it's very soft light, very even light. There's light coming from both sides of my face. There's a little bit of a shadow behind me from this light stand right here that I'm going to be using as a backlight or a hair light. But overall, it's pretty good. But if I want a little bit more of a dramatic, different look, what I'm going to do now is close the garage door and start by turning on my key light, which is right here. Then we'll add my backlight right here. That's going to be my, my hair light. And then I'm going to add this third light, which is going to be shining up on the background, which is going to really make me pop from that background. So let's go do that. So here I am with one key light. Now I can change the position of this a little bit. Right here, it's just a little bit off to the right side of the camera if you were behind the camera or to my left. It's pretty harsh though and it's pretty direct. Now the settings on my camera, I'm using a wide 16 millimeter lens on my crop sensor Fuji camera, but I'm still at the 148th shutter speed. I'm at 160 ISO, which is pretty low. And then I have my aperture to really control the brightness and the exposure of my image. It's a little bit bright, but if I'm going for that ultimate shallow depth of field look, and I want to open up all the way to f1.4, which is a pretty shallow depth of field, then this is what that's going to look like. Like So the benefit of having an LED panel that I can dim down is to be able to control my lighting with the light panel itself so that no matter what settings I have on my camera, it's still going to be exposed properly. So I'm gonna move this light in a little bit and dim it down just a bit. And that's pretty good. I'm gonna add about 20% power on this light panel. So these panels come in different brightnesses and things, but this is a typical one foot by one foot LED panel. It's the equivalent of, equivalent of 500 watts. So this looks pretty good. Now, F1.4 is super shallow depth of field. And so I might bump it up just, let's see. F2 is going to be still super shallow depth of field, but give me a little bit more room if I'm moving in and out so that I'm in focus. Now I'm using my autofocus to try to get focus on my face and then switching back to manual focus. Obviously having another shooter there would be beneficial to make sure that we have perfect focus manually, or I could set up some sort of like, sometimes I set up a tripod with like a t-shirt or something that's right here in this plane and this focal plane to get focus manually before I sit down. So now you can see though from the first natural light setup to the one light setup how different this looks. And I think bringing that light as close as possible with some of that diffusion on gives it this sort of very cool vibe with the background falling back into darkness. And you get that by putting this light as close as possible and as, as low as possible. If I had this back further and brighter, the background is going to be brighter as well. So if you want that dark background kind of look, bring it up close, just like this. Now let me add my backlight. Now this backlight was a little bit of an issue because this camera is very wide. So I had to 
move that backlight pretty far away. So we're gonna see what it looks like right here. So you can see on this side of my face and on my back how it sort of lights me up and it gives me a little bit more definition from the background. Now, I think it's a little bit bright. I can also see it sort of shining in the top corner of this video frame. Ideally, I want it to be positioned opposite from what my key light is. In a perfect world, I would have it closer or up higher. And if I wasn't using, using a wide angle lens, I would be able to get away with that. So we're having to deal with the elements of our situation, but that's fine, we're working with it. So I'm just dimming it down because it doesn't have to be so bright. It's just still a little bit of definition. Now, I wanna show you what it would look like compared to this shot right here, where you can see some light on this side of my face, which I'm not a huge fan of. If I'm just going, let me just put it right behind me and show you what that looks like. So this is a more ideal look with this hair light behind me. Obviously you see that light stand and if you're going for a shot where you want to see the light stand, that's perfectly fine. If I was using a more telephoto lens and the sh shot was a little bit closer up, I would be able to get away with something like this where you wouldn't see the stand. And I like that a lot better than having that light on this side of my face, which can sometimes be a little bit awkward or shiny. So just things you have to deal with. If I'm going to use the wide angle lens, I'm going to have to push this out of the frame. Another option is to try to come from down low and I can try to do that from over right behind me and maybe I'll try that. So now I have it directly behind me and it sort of gives us a little bit of separation behind. It has some light behind on my shoulders but it kind of looks like one of those like crime scene sort of videos where it's got this direct up light coming from behind me and I'm not a huge fan of that look. So I'm gonna put it back over there off screen and see what we can do to minimize the light on this side of my face. Now let me show you what it looks like with it on and off. Both are great options and sometimes I would prefer just this, but you can see with it on, it's going to give a little bit more definition to this side of my face, which I'm okay with that balance and then also the back of my head. One thing to note though is when I turn it on, can you see it in the reflection of my picture frames back there? Do you see it? You see that reflection back there? It's not the end of the world, but it's just something else you have to think about if you're using lights and you have picture frames and glass in your video frame pay attention to those light reflections. I'm okay with that. It's a little bit, you could, you would barely notice it if I didn't point it out. So now I have my key light set up. I have my backlight set up or my hair light. Next, I'm going to add an ambient light that's going to bounce up against the wall behind me. So here's this light. It's another one by one LED panel. I don't have any diffusion on it right now because Partially that filter that goes over it is kind of big and I need to block it with my body in the main shot. So what I can do is add this right here. So if I turn it on, you can automatically see what it looks like in the main video shining behind me. And I'm probably gonna have it dimmed quite a bit. Another thing I can do though, I do have a little bit of diffusion right here and I wanna show you what this looks like if I put this in. Pay attention to the background. See how it sort of softens it? Off, on, off, on. It's cutting down the light a little bit, but it's also just spreading it out and making it a little bit softer. Now you can see it with me sitting here with it on and with it off. What do you like? Do you like it with it off like it right now or with it on? To me, I like how it sort of creates sort of like a spotlight in the background where I'm in the center of it. So it creates this sort of natural vignette around the frame of the video with me in the center. And I think that sort of style is something that I have gone for in my YouTube videos and my course videos. And for me, it's what I prefer. Now it's dimmed down pretty low. So let me dim it up all the way. So that's 
that's pretty darn bright and it gets to a point where the background is competing with me in the foreground for what's exposed properly. So I think there's sort of a happy medium with me somewhere like that that I think looks pretty darn good. So now I have my key light, I've got my rim light or my hair light right here, and then also the back ambient light up there. On, and then also my back ambient light shining on the background. Now another light that might be common is what's called the fill light. And that would be a light that's coming from this side of the frame, so opposite the key light. And it would just be filling in some of these shadows that you see right here. Now you can do that with a light itself. You can also do it with a reflector if you don't have another light. So let me get a reflector and show you what that looks like. So this is a great little reflector here. It has a, a cover that has a silver and a gold side. You could also take it out and use just the white, which is a good filter or it can reflect light as well. The gold side will give a little bit of warmth to the light that's reflecting on it. And so that might be what you're going for. Sometimes it's a little too warm in my opinion, but let's try it out. So I'm just gonna hold it like this so you can kind of see what it looks like. And I'm looking at the monitor, so this is with it on, off. On, off. So you can see that with it on, it does definitely add a little bit of light to the right side of my face. Now let me switch it from the gold side to silver. So this is gold. And this is silver. So the silver is definitely a bit of a cooler light. I actually like the warmth being added just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just figure out how to jimmy rig this to set up right here. And I think that's going to finalize my setup. So here you can see the setup that I have. So I just attach this to a light stand with a couple clips. There's my backlight. So hopefully this deep dive into my lighting setup for my YouTube and course videos gives you a deeper sense of how you can use your different lights to give different scenes and vibes. Now, the natural light video, completely different than what you see here. Now, some people might prefer that. Sometimes I like a natural light setting, but this is a much more professional setup that just makes, I think, the video a little bit more dynamic. Of course, it takes having lights and a light kit to be able to create this look, but that's what you're going to have to do as you invest in yourself in becoming a better videographer. Now, in terms of the specific models and things like that, it doesn't really matter as much, but for your education, I'm using a Draycast LED light panel kit. As I mentioned, the two one by ones are about 500 watt equivalents. The backlight is half the size of the one by one. There's lots of other brands out there for lights. Aperture is a very popular brand for YouTubers and content creators. But once you understand how a light works, where you position it, you can really create the same setup with all kinds and brands of lights. All right, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in another video.